sperm whales hunt in silence, one by one, thousands of meters below the surface. They don't need help. They don't need protection. So when they abandon the deep, cluster together and hide their young in the middle, something has gone very wrong. What could possibly force the ocean's most confident predator to behave like prey? Sperm whales are not social hunters by necessity. Most of the time, they spread out across kilometers of open ocean, diving alone into darkness no human can survive. Each dive can last more than an hour, and their descent can reach 2,000 to nearly 3,000 meters. Down there, sperm whales are unmatched. They hunt squid the size of a school bus, relying on clicks so powerful they are among the loudest biological sounds on Earth. This is an animal built to operate independently. That is why what happens at the surface is so unsettling. In rare situations, sperm whales suddenly rise together fast and deliberate and form a tight circle just beneath the waves. Their massive heads press inward, their calves disappear into the center, their tails turn outward like a living weapon. Marine biologists call this the Marguerite Formation. It is not used for hunting, it is not used for rest. It is a purely defensive posture, and it only appears when a very specific threat is nearby. Each adult sperm whale weighs 40 to 50 tons. Their tail flukes can deliver blows strong enough to shatter bone. Ferocious predators, like the big white shark, simply cannot afford to test one. So the idea that multiple sperm whales would willingly expose themselves at the surface, where they are loud, visible, and vulnerable, should not make sense. But behavior like this does not evolve by accident. Normally, sperm whales are never quiet. They constantly communicate with other sperm whales using their own dialect. During these surface gatherings, recordings show that the clicks slow down. Then, in some cases, they stop almost entirely. The ocean around them goes unnaturally quiet. This silence is not calm, but deliberate. Sound travels far underwater. There are even sound highways. This is where killer whales enter the picture, not as monsters, but as specialists. Orcas are smaller than sperm whales, but they operate on an entirely different logic. They hunt in coordinated pods. They communicate constantly. They test their targets and occasionally even bully their prey. Crucially, they don't need to kill an adult sperm whale to succeed. They only need to create confusion and calves are the weak point. Young sperm whales cannot dive deep. Their lungs and muscles are not developed for long descents, and their swimming speed is limited. When orcas appear, the entire defensive strategy of the sperm whales shifts to one goal. Do not let the calves be isolated. The marguerite formation achieves exactly that. Any orca approaching the circle risks a full-force tail strike from multiple directions. It is one of the few situations where sperm whales actively present their most dangerous weapon instead of hiding it below. From above, the scene can look almost peaceful. A ring of dark backs breaking the surface, slow movements, no splashing. But underwater footage tells a different story. Orcas circle the formation at a distance, probing, vocalizing, testing reactions. This is not a charge, it is a face-off and both sides know the stakes. What makes this conflict so difficult to study is where it happens. These encounters usually take place far offshore. Research vessels have rarely witnessed them. Most evidence comes indirectly. Scars shaped like orca teeth, calves that vanish from groups, sudden changes in migration routes. For decades, scientists debated whether adult sperm whales were ever attacked at all. But the behavior says they are preparing for something real. If you enjoy watching apex predators quietly realize they are not alone at the top, feel free to like and subscribe. What happens next is rarely visible and almost never recorded. 
and therefore barely any footage is available. But once the formation holds, the ocean becomes a slow, moving standoff. Killer whales do not rush in. They circle at a distance, sometimes for minutes, sometimes for more than an hour. The sperm whales answer with restraint. Their tails remain outward, moving just enough to track motion. Any orca that comes too close risks a full force strike from a fluke nearly five meters wide. A single hit can crush ribs. This is why adult sperm whales are rarely killed outright. The cost is too high. Instead, orcas look for fractures in the pattern. A calf drifting too far from the center. An exhausted adult lagging behind. A moment when the circle loosens. This is not a hunt built on speed. It is built on pressure and endurance. The danger increases the longer the encounter lasts. Sperm whales are built for deep dives, not, not prolonged surface defense. Remaining near the surface means more energy spent, more oxygen burned, and less room to escape downward. Orcas exploit this. They do not need to win quickly. They need just to wait. In extremely rare cases, humans have seen what happens when that waiting pays off. In April 2013, off the coast of Sri Lanka, a group of photographers and researchers witnessed something almost no one had seen before. A small pod of killer whales engaged a family group of sperm whales in open water. The sperm whales formed the same defensive circle. The sea churned. Orcas rammed and bit at the edge of the formation, repeatedly trying to separate a younger whale. For over half an hour, the surface boiled with movement. Underwater images captured during that encounter showed exactly what scientists had only inferred before. Coordinated orca attacks against a much larger species and sperm whales holding formation under extreme stress. In the end, one young whale was isolated. What happened next occurred out of view below the surface. When the water calmed, the orcas remained. The sperm whales did not. Events like this are so rare they almost do not exist in the scientific record or even recorded on camera. Fewer than a dozen similar cases have been documented worldwide. Not because they do not happen, but because the ocean does an excellent job of hiding them. These encounters take place far from shipping lanes, often in rough seas, sometimes at night. Most leave no trace beyond scars and missing calves. Those scars tell their own story. Adult sperm whales often carry crescent-shaped bite marks along their flanks and tails, matching the size and spacing of orca teeth. These marks are usually superficial, suggesting probing attacks rather than fatal ones. Calves, however, leave nothing behind. Over time, sperm whales appear to have adapted to this threat in subtle ways. Some populations alter their migration routes. Others surface more frequently in tight groups when orcas are detected acoustically. Researchers have recorded changes in dive patterns and vocal behavior in areas with high orca presence. This is not panic. It is learned behavior passed down through generations that survived the same pressure. And that may be the most unsettling part. This is not a new conflict. It is an old one. Long before cameras and research vessels, sperm whales learned that the deep is not always the safest place and the surface is not always dangerous. Sometimes survival means doing the opposite of what you are built for. Sometimes the largest predator in the ocean has to stop being a hunter and become a shield. The war between sperm whales and killer whales isn't constant. It doesn't rage every day, but it exists quietly wherever their territories overlap. And when it surfaces, even briefly, it reminds us that the ocean doesn't have a single apex predator, only layers of dominance, each with its own rules. If you enjoy discovering that even giants have contingency plans, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you want to see what humans did when they decided sperm whales were just another resource, 
watch the video titled Five Shocking Things Humans Killed Sperm Whales For.